All right, who's heard of a little character named Spider-Man? So these are old school Spider-Man. So not Spider-Man number one. So relax a little bit. It's, you know, maybe in the in the high double digits or, or the 100s. Um, and I'm going to show you a lot of titles. So Amazing Spider-Man on into Spectacular through uh, Web of Spider-Man. But first, we're going to focus on Amazing Spider-Man and a few of the spectacular titles. All right, I told you to get a hold of yourself a little bit. These aren't all going to be bangers, but some of them will be. This is the Will-O-Wisp. Does anyone remember the Will-O-Wisp? I don't really either. And I read this comic, but it's been years and years ago. And this was a few years before my time. The first comic I got was Spider-Man number 200 um, when I was a kid off the spinner rack. And so this is 168. This is from 77, uh, the year that Star Wars came out. Uh, so uh, obviously I started at 200 and went forward. But then as I've gotten older, uh, I've gone back on things like Marvel Unlimited and and then issues like this, and I and I read them, but I can't remember much about the Will-O-Wisp, frankly. <clears throat> Here is Fusion. Some of these characters are just wild, but I love this cover, this part of the cover. Um, I don't care much about Fusion, but look at that. That's a nice little, if you isolate that and coming down through the bridge, that's a neat perspective. Kind of wish that wasn't here, and you could just look at Spidey. 269 in the black suit. So this is the mid 80s, right after Secret Wars. 270. This is a famous cover uh, with Fire Lord. So Fire Lord 1 and 2. Um, again in the mid 80s. Moon Knight. This this has been getting popular because of the Moon Knight series. Anything where Moon Knight appears on the cover with a popular character. So Luke Cage, hero for hire, just punch Spidey. Marvel, they love to have their heroes fight each other. Sure, it was a misunderstanding, folks. Don't worry about it. 157, Doc Gock. That's more like it. A good guy versus a bad guy. That's what I like to see. So Doc Gock in a helicopter, it looks like. So that's a really fun cover. I've never really taken the time to look at that now that I have. Really enjoy that. The chameleon, all that. This is kind of fun. Here he's springing into action and twirling and all sorts of fun stuff. That is number 186. I said there's a couple of double digits. Here is number 84 with the kingpin. Everyone associates the kingpin with Daredevil. Dare, kingpin did not appear in Daredevil comics until the 100s. Kingpin began as a Spider-Man villain. And so there he is in number 84. This, my friends, is the first comic book I ever bought. So this is late. Um, I remember it as being 1980, but it might have been 1979, somewhere around there. I was uh, seven years old, and, you know, it looked cool to a kid. That day it was 200, so it was a round number. I thought it was great. I can tell you every beat of that story. This is not the original comic I owned as a kid. I had to come back and... Pay a ton of money to relive my childhood, but I got that comic in, and I loved it. That started me on a lifelong journey of being a nerd. There's number 66. That's a classic cover, and I love it. Just that Mysterio. Mysterio covers were always quite fun, uh, to be honest. Let's get these out of the way so we can put some new ones up there. And let's do with the first cover appearance of Mary Jane Watson. I think the issue she appeared in was... Uh, number 52 with the famous panel of uh, Face It Tiger, You Hit the Jackpot. But here she is on the cover, just oblivious to Spider-Man behind her, and she's just dancing the night away. This is another famous cover featuring Medusa. Um, not much else to say about that. It's Spider-Man cover with Medusa. This is um, one of the major Spider-Man keys. Um, Certainly, this is the first appearance of Kingpin. This is Spider-Man number 50. Um, this is a Kazar cover. Let's put these up at the same time because this is a two-part lizard story. 40, 
44 and 45. Spider-Man battering Kirk Connors the Lizard. Um, here's about 10 issues previous. Um, another gorgeous cover. I mean, when it comes to Spidey, I mean, a 12 cent Stan Lee, you just can't beat. Except when you go to number 35, which is maybe an even, even more famous Spider-Man cover. Um, number 39. Now, is this it? Number 42? Is this the first Mary Jane? Or is it 52? I don't know. That's a beat-up comic, but I'm happy to have it. Number 58. J. Jonah Jameson. Number 65. Again, Kingpin. Introduced in number 50. There he is in number 65. Roughing up Spidey a little bit. Number 93. The Prowler is not considered one of Spidey's main villains but you know don't sleep on the prowler folks all right take those down so we can put this one up which i love this cover i don't know what it is folks but i just love that um you know you got doc gawk and mysterio and the vulture you got morbius on there i mean it's just a great looking cover to me anyway it's not one of the it's not one of the most well known but for some reason i like it Here's Spider-Man 150. Oh, no. And I mentioned some spectacular Spider-Man as well. So, um, Amazing Spider-Man was the original Spider-Man title. Um, obviously, Spider-Man is, if not the most popular, certainly in the top three. And I would say the most popular superhero. Um, I mean, he's just a part of our culture. And... Why wouldn't Marvel want to have multiple Spider-Man titles when you have a uh, property that popular? And so they launched Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Man. This is issue number one um, featuring the tarantula. And so I always liked... Um, there were stretches, frankly, where a spectacular Spider-Man was a better comic than Amazing Spider-Man. So don't get mad at me. It's true. You know it. Uh, this is... Uh, a great era. This is um, number 125. This is Spider-Woman. And this is uh, the Wrecking Crew, which frankly are my favorites. I love the Wrecking Crew so much. If they would show up in the MCU, I would just be giddy if they're done right. So the all-new Spider-Woman was introduced in uh, Secret Wars, number seven, I think it was. And then she would show up. The black costume was popular during this era. And as you can see here, number 26, um, Spidey has the black costume there. Um, gosh, what would that be? Would that be like 87 or something like that? 85? I don't know. This, I think, is one of the most overlooked <clears throat> Spider-Man keys. Uh, actually, on nerdsonearth.com, I wrote an article about this and, and highlighted this as one of the great Spider-Man keys that if you have 200 bucks... You could either get two pretty good copies of this comic or one just really sharp copy. And uh, this, of course, is Spectacular Spider-Man 64, the first appearance of Cloak and Dagger. So, Dagger and Cloak. And, you know, Cloak and Dagger are popular characters, and they've been enduring characters for decades. Enough that they got their own show on Hulu. And it's not one of the most popular shows um, but just the fact that they got their own show shows you, um, their staying power and their popularity and the fact that you can get their first appearance, um, for just a couple hundred bucks, it, it should have a floor of 500 because it is just a great, um, a great comic from great characters. And so every time I get it at a good price, I gobble it up. All right, nerds, this is part one. This was Amazing Spider-Man and Spectacular Spider-Man. Next, uh, we're going to look at some web of Spider-Man and, and the Spider-Man title that was really long running that a lot of people uh, overlook. And so that'll be in part two, different video. So if you want to watch stuff like this and follow along, uh, subscribe and like and comment and all those hoops that Google has you do. Um, but, you know, I hope you enjoy it. Spider-Man, everyone loves Spider-Man. I mean, he's awesome, and he's had some of the most iconic covers 
um, and character introductions, you know, like the first Kingpin and even these Cloak and Dagger. Um, so it's great. So I hope you enjoyed it.